For this problem, I want to consider we have some applied force onto three blocks. We'll assume all the blocks have the same mass of 2 kilograms, and we will also assume that there's going to be some friction going on here. We'll say this thing is moving, so this will be kinetic friction, and we want to see, okay, what will be the acceleration of these blocks, and what will be the magnitude of the various forces acting on these blocks. To get into this, it's best that we do a free body diagram separately for each one of these blocks on their own, and then we can try to go backtrack and figure out, okay, how should this thing be accelerating? What should be the magnitude of the forces acting on here? So we'll start with box one. So forces that we should expect on here, we should expect its own weight, and we should expect a normal force from the ground. We have the applied force pushing to the right. And there should also be some force that block 2 is pushing on block 1. So with my notation of forces here, this is force acting on block 1 due to block 2. So this first number here is saying what is being acted on, and the 2 here is saying what's the source. Same sort of thing here with the normal force here. One is, this is the normal force acting on block one. So those are the forces acting on there, and we should also expect there to be friction. In what direction? Well, the system would be moving to the right because of the applied force, so we should expect the friction force, kinetic friction, to be to the left. So that's one free body diagram. Let's repeat that for the other two. So we can repeat the operations and find the same sorts of things for blocks two and three. Notice for block two, the forces I have here, none of them include the applied force that I had shown because the applied force is only directly acting on block one. Now block one does push block two to the right, which is included in this force. And also block three is going to be pushing back on block two, so here. We, of course, have friction. As for block 3, the only force to the right is due to block 2 pushing on it, and the only force to the left is due to the friction force. So that's our basic setups. Now let's see if we can figure out how this system would accelerate. The easy way to think about this is, okay, there are basically two forces in sum acting on this whole system here. If we were to treat blocks one, two, and three as one body, there would be the applied force pushing this whole thing to the right, and there would also then be some friction force to the left. There, of course, would be all the different forces between the blocks, but because of Newton's third law, all those forces should be equal and opposite, so all the forces in between if we would add everything up, would just be canceling themselves out. Again, if we just treat it as one body, then that's what we would expect, like there's nothing going on at all. In which case, if we want to look at the sum of the forces on this system, we'll have the applied force minus the force of friction of the system equals mass of the system times acceleration. Okay, so if we can figure out the friction force, we should be in good shape. So we know that friction is supposed to be, in the case of kinetic friction, the coefficient of friction mu k times the normal force. And in that case, if we try to think again of this whole thing as a system, we could think about, all right, the whole system has weight. And then there'd be some sort of general normal force that holds up the whole thing. Now, since there's no acceleration in the up-down direction, there's only two forces, it's fairly straightforward to see that, okay, the normal force is equal to the weight of the system. They may not be true in all cases, but here it is nice and straightforwardly. So I can then use that information, plug into here, and find that the friction force should be mu k mass of the system times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So I can plug that in down here, 
in our equation. And then I know what the applied force is. That was given as 12 newtons. Mu k is given. Mass is given, so we can solve for acceleration. Algebraically, it will look like this then, if I plug everything in and do a little bit of solving. I've applied force minus mu k m system g divided by mass of the system. Mass of the system here will be 6 kilograms since we have one, two, three different masses, each one 2 kilograms. If I plug all that in, I will find that the acceleration in the x direction shall be negative 2.9 meters per second squared. So negative meaning that actually the net force would be to the left. In other words, the friction force is actually greater than the applied force. Huh. So if this thing is actually already moving to the right, it's going to slow down and stop. If this thing isn't moving already, then actually we would actually be dealing with not, fric uh, not kinetic but static friction. So with this sort of setup, this is telling me, okay, if it's really kinetic friction, it already needs to be moving because otherwise that force wouldn't actually get it going. This thing's going to eventually stop and stay still unless we push harder. Nonetheless, we know what the acceleration is of the system. And in that case, we actually know what the acceleration is of each block. It has to be the same. So if we know what the acceleration of each block is, maybe we can now go back, use the free body diagrams we had before, and figure out, okay, how much is this system going to have all the forces in magnitude? Let's figure that out for each piece. And for simplicity, I'm going to actually start with the third block because it has the fewest number of forces acting on it, so it might be the easiest to solve. So let's set that up again. So this is a repeat of the free body diagram, and this could be Newton's second law on block three in the x direction. We know what acceleration is, we solve for that. We know the mass, in this case two kilograms. So, and we should also be able to figure out what the magnitude of the friction force is. Again, of course, friction force mu k times the normal force. In this case, the normal force acting on block 3 alone. And again, for simplicity, we see that, oh, this is, normal force is just going to equal the weight of that block. So nice, simple to plug in. All right. If we do that, we're going to then find, with one step of algebra from this equation, that F 3, 2, the force acting on three, block 3 due to block 2, is going to equal then mass 3 times the acceleration plus UKM3G. And so we find that magnitude of that force is going to be actually exactly 4 newtons. And just remember when you are plugging in for acceleration, you're plugging in negative 2.9. Don't forget that minus sign. So that is the force of block 3 on block 2. So we can now use that information maybe for looking at block 2. So we repeat the same operations. Our free body diagram is here. Some of the forces in the x direction. Notice we have the force on block 2 from block 1, the force on block 2 from block 3, friction, all summing up equal to mass times acceleration of that block, and the friction magnitude is given in the same sort of way we did before. Now, you would look at this equation and say, oh, that's two unknowns there, F21 and F23. But we have a nice little luxury that the magnitude of F23 is the same as the magnitude of F32. And we said that the magnitude of F32 was 4 newtons. That has to be equal then to the same magnitude for F23 because of Newton's third law, that those forces have to be equal but in opposite directions. So same magnitude, and I don't have to plug in the minus sign again because I'm already using the minus sign here to indicate direction. So everything we're plugging in other than acceleration is just going to be nice straightforward magnitudes, right? So I already know what F23 is with 
no math steps, it's already four newtons. Let's solve for F21. We can do that algebraically, plugging things in, and we're going to get it looking like so. F21 is just going to equal M2A plus F23 plus our friction force, which is mu K M2G. Once we plug all of that in, well, it's just going to turn out to actually be exactly 8 newtons. Oh, this is getting too easy now, isn't it? So, let's try to use this information now to look at the first block. So we can repeat the exact same procedure. We could even set up Newton's second law here. Though technically when we look at this, well, force or friction we find the same way before. It's just going to be mu times the normal force. And again, the normal force should just be the same as the weight in this nice simple case. The applied force is given. That was 12 Newtons. So in actual fact, there's only one unknown here. So we could solve for it using this setup. Not too bad. Or we could also use... Uh, Newton's third law, because using the same principles that the magnitude of force 2 on 1 is equal to the magnitude of force 1 on 2, which we're solving for, and we know the magnitude of the force of on block 2 from block 1 was 8 Newtons. That's what we found before. Hmm. So, again, we could do this with absolutely no algebra steps at all. And we should also even be able to derive the exact same thing up here. So that could be a nice simple check and find that indeed, if we do the work here, F12 should turn out to again be 8 newtons. Now, if you had also done the same sort of setup and did it without friction, you would have found a different acceleration, but you actually would have found the internal forces would have been the same. Interesting result, isn't that? But no matter what, this would be the same sort of procedure you could do, and using Newton's third law, knowing how the pairs are equal in magnitude, and using Newton's second law, we can set up equations like this and solve for unknowns.